Hey, everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are here for Dispatch 2 from CES 2023. And where we are at is my favorite event of the whole show, which is Pepcom. And this is another showcase event where a bunch of companies who are exhibiting here are all in one room. And what we're looking for are some of the things that a lot of the other channels aren't covering. So we're going to walk around, and anything that piques my interest is going to make it into the dispatch today. And we had a great night last night at CES Unveiled, and there are companies here that were not there the other night. So we're going to find more stuff, and hopefully you will all enjoy it. And I do want to thank our sponsor, though, first, and they are the High Seoul Company Virtual Cluster. They're a startup incubator located in Seoul, Korea, with over 1,000 talented companies on the roster. Only the best companies make the High Seoul list after a careful selection process that looks at a company's growth, technology, and competence. Later this week, we're going to be visiting three of these companies developing groundbreaking AI technologies for the finance, food, and marketing industries. But if you're looking to accelerate your own business growth in Asia, don't wait. Head over to lon.tv slash high soul, and that will take you over to the Seoul Business Agency who can match you up with talented Korean companies looking for international partners. And what we're going to go do now is look for some really cool tech on the floor. So let's get to it. So we're visiting the HP table, and if you are a PC builder, you might have an interest in this case here. Now, you can buy this Omen PC assembled and ready to go for you, but if you are a builder, you can actually just buy the case for 250 bucks and do it yourself with your own components. It doesn't come with the fans or any of the motherboard or the GPU or anything, but you can assemble your own PC using the HP case. And the uh, difference with this case versus some other ones out there is how they are handling the radiator cooling. So you can see there is a chamber here, a gap between the system and where the radiator will exhaust out. And what they say is that because it's drawing in air from outside of the case, it can actually keep the CPU slightly uh, cooler than if it was a radiator attached to the top of the case where the air is coming up through it. And they said Linus Tech Tips did some work on this. I haven't seen the video yet, so you all may want to check that out. But it does apparently have some results. And it's kind of neat to see a major PC manufacturer just selling a bare bones case if you want to kind of do it yourself with components that you pick. So you can buy one built or you can build it yourself. And we're going to actually take one of these home with us. This is the 620 FHD webcam. And this, as its name suggests, is a 1080p webcam. But what I found interesting about it is that it supports Windows Hello facial recognition. So if you're using Windows Hello face recognition on a laptop and you're docking frequently, this will unlock your computer when your laptop lid is closed. And that might have some appeal for some of you out there. And we've got one, and we'll be reviewing it on the channel in due course. Now, this is the Omen 17 gaming laptop. And this is coming out soon. It's got the latest Intel processors and NVIDIA GPUs. And of course, you'll be able to configure it any which way you want. Of note, it has a 1440p, 240 hertz display, because that's what all the cool kids want in their displays these days. And the other thing that's interesting about this is that it has an optical mechanical keyboard that actually has a click to it. And now I'm in a noisy room, so I can't hear how clicky it is, but I'm definitely hearing the click pretty well here. And it has the feel of kind of a desktop uh, mechanical keyboard with that click and a little bit more tactile feedback. The um, travel is not as deep as a desktop keyboard would be, but if you are somebody who likes that click and want it in a laptop, this one's got it. Now, this PC is a prototype. It's not functioning here at the show, but it's something that HP is going to come out with around the June time frame. And the focus here is on uh, sustainability. So there's a lot of recycled materials in this, more so than many other PCs. And a lot of the components that they've put on are less hazardous to the environment should it ever get thrown out. Of note here, on the bottom, they have a plastic bottom here, but it's mixed with a uh, bio-recycled uh, material like cooking oil. So they're buying up this uh, re recycled or waste oil and combining it with plastic to make this bottom case component. The top part of it is aluminum, 
and this is a uh, recycled aluminum top case. And the packaging, they tell me, has no plastic in it at all. That includes the envelopes for all the documentation, which are now paper envelopes versus plastic, and even paper tape to seal it up. This will have 13th generation Intel processors on board, and they're gonna have a QHD version at the higher end of the display choices. We don't have pricing on this yet, and this one, of course, is a prototype, but by the June timeframe, we should see uh, this machine make its way to market. I know a lot of you are concerned about e-waste, so I thought I would point this out to you here. And we're actually working on trying to go visit an electronics recycling plant to see exactly what happens when this stuff gets into the waste stream, so stay tuned for that. Got a couple of other machines here that are coming out in the spring. This is in the HP Dragonfly line of laptops. And they tell me they're trying to simplify things. So you don't have a lot of configuration options here. If you're just looking for something that performs well, that will do the sorts of things that each operating system here typically has people do. And the reason why we're talking about which operating system is that one of these is a Chromebook. And this one with the RGB keyboard is the Chromebook. It's got a 1200 nit display, an eight megapixel webcam up at the top. And it's designed for people that do a lot of conferencing and a lot of remote work and that sort of thing has a fingerprint reader here as well. And it's a little on the heavier side, about 3.3 pounds, but it is kind of a, uh, more of a monster Chromebook than what you typically see out there. Uh, the one next to it is a Windows-based machine. Doesn't have as bright of a display, and the webcam is a five megapixel camera, but this has got an AMD Ryzen on board. The Chromebook has an Intel chip, and HP says they worked with AMD in a partnership to maximize the power efficiency of the device. That includes under load, but it also includes just basic idling and that sort of thing as well. So they spent a lot of time focusing on battery life here. And again, these are not out yet, but when they do come out, these might be some computers we should get in to take a closer look at. So this is a neat product. This is the Cruise Blender. And if Jake can get in a little closer here, we'll take a look at it. So this works, first of all, you buy it as a kit here for $129. And this works with a uh, thermo-insulated uh, you know, thermos like this one. They call them hydro flasks now. It shows you how old I am. And what you can do is uh, attach your bottle to this thing. And when you hit the button here, it's a pretty powerful blender, but it's completely cordless. It has a battery on board, actually a lot of batteries, as you can see here. I thought these were capacitors, but they're actually batteries. And the uh, two gentlemen here at the table used to work for Apple and it'll crush ice, it'll do uh, you know, your drinks on the beach, it'll do your protein shakes, and you can take it with you. Now they offer a number of different bottle sizes and some different colors, and even a clear one here as you saw before, but it will also work with other hydro flasks because they chose a common threading for the blender component, so it may likely work with some of the bottles you have already in your cupboard. Now, we don't cover a lot of kid stuff on the channel. I did make the mistake of reviewing some kid products a little while back, and that was uh, pretty scary from a content standpoint. But this is something called the Baby Arc. And the best way to think about this is kind of like a armored personnel carrier for your kid. Um, this is made not out of plastic, but out of carbon fiber and a bunch of other materials. And it does some things that are really important for a parent. So you saw there that the uh, light here a second ago was lit up red, which indicated that things were not properly balanced and seated. And then it lit up green when it was. Another thing that it does is it detects if you leave the child in the car. That's something that happens quite a bit where children get left in the car because the parent just forgets that they were with them. It happens a lot. And this will let you know with an alert that your kid's still in the car and you gotta go and retrieve them. Um, another thing that's important about this I thought worth mentioning is that it doesn't expire because of the materials that are made. So typically there's a life cycle to car seats, a lot like the Chromebooks that we talk about in the computer reviews that we do. And so you have to go out and swap the car seat out every couple of years. And this one will never expire. So if you're planning to have seven or eight kids, you don't have to buy another car seat again. That might save you some money. Uh, that said, it does cost $1,000 pre-order. Uh, it is uh, going to sell for $1,200 when it's released. In addition to some of the materials on the seat, I don't know if we can pull that off again, but there's a um, shock-absorbing steel plate or a steel tube inside of the lower unit here, and that is designed to absorb impacts as well. So it does offer a little bit more than your typical car seat does. And this is called the Baby Ark, and the engineer of this served in the Israeli military, 
and was wondering why he was protecting his children with plastic and styrofoam car seats and not something more robust. So we're visiting the OWC table, and there are two things I want to show you here. The first is their Envoy Pro Mini. This is what looks like a thumb drive, but this is actually a USB Type-C SSD, but it also has USB-A on board, too, so you get the best of both worlds. Pretty neat little device, pretty fast. I'm looking at getting one of these for my Steam Deck so I could maybe boot up Windows on it just by sticking this thing into its USB-C port. This is, after all, a USB-C drive. So here's something I think a lot of you are going to be excited about if you are into Thunderbolt docking stations. Now, let me kind of paint the picture here. We've got an iPad Pro with one of those M1 chips or M2 chips in there running a video editing application. And right now, that iPad Pro is plugged in via Thunderbolt because the iPad Pro has Thunderbolt now. And it's in this dock here uh, where it's being plugged into. And this dock is a Thunderbolt dock. And it might look like, you know, your run-of-the-mill Thunderbolt dock, but this one doesn't have a power brick. It has an integrated power supply. So when we reviewed these docks, almost every single one we've looked at has a power brick that's as big as the dock itself. This one has it all integrated. It's nice and metal here. It's got a good heat sink on it. Feels pretty good. Uh, what you've got here in addition is an SD card uh, reader here. Uh, along with your headphone jack, you know, kind of the usual things you see on it. There are two Thunderbolt pass-throughs, though, on the other side, so you can uh, chain two more Thunderbolt devices to it. You've got an HDMI out here that, of course, will support 4K60. And in addition to that, the Ethernet is 2.5 gig versus the 1 gig we typically see on these things. So if you've got a multi-gig connection, this thing can handle that. And the power output on it is enough for a MacBook Pro, about 96 watts, I believe. So it is more than the 60 that you typically see on some of these docks. Uh, this costs $399, but I think if you're someone who uses a Thunderbolt dock and wanted something with a little faster Ethernet and some more uh, options and no power brick, uh, this is definitely something to consider, and I'm pretty excited to get one of these in for review. So we are visiting the Kensington table, and in full disclosure, they have been a sponsor on the channel. I've done some tutorial videos about their products in the past, but I found a couple of things that I think are interesting here. So this is a trackball, and it's a wireless trackball. Pretty cool. And it reminds me a lot of the Kensington trackball that I bought 30 years ago for my Apple IIgs. You can take the ball out and clean it. And it's funny, when something works, you don't really need to go too crazy with it, although this does have modern accoutrements like multiple buttons and things that you can program into it. And I'm going to pass behind Jake here. And if you're not quite ready to transition to a trackball, they have kind of a hybrid device here. So check out this one. This is a uh, trackball that kind of feels like a more traditional mouse. Now, you can't move it around like a mouse. It stays stationary. But you got your ball here, and it kind of feels like a more traditional mouse experience. It's actually very comfortable, very ergonomic. So that's a nice little thing from Kensington, who's been making these trackballs for decades now. And then they've got a neat little dock here that I thought you might all find of interest. This is a USB-C dock. It is powered by the device that you plug it into. You got dual display output on it. And on the top, it's got some nice uh, carpeting here, along with a Qi charger. So it'll do about 10 watts, not a lot, but it is a, a pretty neat little dock that you can take with you. And when you put your phone down on it, you can charge it when it's plugged into the PC. And of course, this being a computer-powered device, you don't need a power source for it. And this is their new QuietType Pro mechanical keyboard. And this is a mechanical keyboard designed for business users who like the mechanical feel but don't like the clicking. So you get that nice tactile response on the keys, but it doesn't make any noise while you're typing on it. It actually feels really nice. It's got a good amount of weight to it, and it's also spill-proof. So if you dump your latte out on it, it will all come out the bottom here. There's a bunch of drain holes here that will uh, allow the liquid to escape onto your desk, but it won't damage the electronics inside. So a nice uh, ergonomic keyboard here for professionals who don't want all the crazy gaming stuff but want something that feels nice. And you also have your conferencing controls here at the top. So when you're uh, looking to hang up on somebody, you can just push the button there and have a satisfying end to your bad phone call. Now we're visiting a company called Ember, and they make mugs that keep themselves hot. So by default, it's about 135 degrees Fahrenheit. 
my friends overseas can do the math on Celsius, because I am uh, not able to do that at the moment. And what this will do is actually keep your drink hot without being plugged in. It'll go for about an hour or so, but if you put it on its little charging base here, it will go longer. And they also have a travel mug here. And the travel mug has a capacitive surface on it. Let me show you this one here. And what you can do is actually adjust the temperature just by hitting the button there. Oh, there we go. So we can adjust the temperature here just on the mug itself. The battery life on this one's a little better than the mugs because it's insulated. And one of the things that they're introducing with a future version of this product that's coming out soon is integration with the Apple Find My network. So uh, you know how AirTags work. Well, this is basically going to have an AirTag built into it just for the travel mug. And if you lose your travel mug or put it down somewhere, the Apple Find My network will help you find it again, just like the AirTags work. So if you start driving away from your mug, it'll tell you. Uh, but you don't want to leave it on the roof of your car, of course. Now, the travel mug here costs about $200. The mugs are a little less expensive. The price varies by size. So we stopped by the Roku table. And you'll recall a few months ago, Roku teamed up with Wise to offer smart home products. Now they've got their own line of televisions coming out. These are coming out in the spring, and they will range from about $119 to $1,000. There's going to be a lineup of 24-inch to 75-inch models. They don't have much more information yet as to what these TVs will have, but I would imagine it'll be pretty similar to the televisions that we've seen running the Roku operating system from other brands. And I wouldn't be surprised if one of those other brands actually made this television. So we stopped by the Epson table and they have some new stuff for us to look at. The first is this new super tank printer, but it looks more like a mega tank to me. And this is a wide format photo printer and it's a tank printer. So you can see you've got all six inks there that you drop in with bottles like that other Epson one that we looked at recently. Now this is designed for printing photos. There's also a scanner here, a flatbed scanner. So you can scan photos and print them right out. You don't have to make every print this large, but you can go that large if you want to that 11 by 17 format. And because it's a tank printer, uh, this uh, completely black photo here will not cost you $700 to print because you're running with a tank printer. And of course, the amount of ink that you use will depend on how much is going on the page. But again, the replacement cost on the bottles is pretty minimal on these devices. So we're going to try to get one of these in for review to learn more about it and put it through its paces. But I thought those of you who are into printers might find this one interesting, especially if you print a lot of photos, which can be very expensive to print. Now, in addition to printers, Epson has been doing projectors for a long time, and they've got a new home theater projector. This is a little on the pricey side, but this is a short throw laser projector. They say it'll go up to 120 inches where it's only 20 inches away from the wall. So you can put it pretty close to the wall that you're projecting on and get a very big image. It is laser powered, 4,000 lumens. So very bright for that price point. It does look best, of course, on the right type of projection screen. But nonetheless, it uh, really, I think, will uh, be something that enthusiasts might like to see. It does have a sound bar built in. They don't have Dolby Atmos on here. So I would imagine if you're a home theater person, you'll probably want your own sound system to go along with it. But it's got plenty of ports on board, HDMI, of course. And it has Android TV built in as well. And it supports 4K HDR but I don't believe it supports Dolby Vision. So I found another kid thing that I think you all might find interesting. If you have kids who get ear infections, this is the Tylenol Smart Check Digital Ear Scope. This is actually made by Tylenol. This is not a licensed product. And what this is designed to do is take a video of the ear canal that you can send to a child's doctor. So if the kid wakes up in the middle of the night with a with a very painful ear, you can take an image, get it to a healthcare provider, and can decide whether or not you need to go in that night, or maybe it's something else. And this attaches to a smartphone, and it uses the existing camera on the smartphone. So we have it right now on a little iPhone, and you can see what it looks like here. Now what's cool is that it's not just like a, a dumb scope. It actually has some AR functionality to help you find the kid's ear canal. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not a medical professional, and I wouldn't know what to look for. 
but the app here is pretty smart. So we're going to simulate an ear. And what you're going to see here in a second, once uh, all the instructions go through here, is the device actually directing us with augmented reality to finding the ear canal. Now, we're not using an actual ear right now, but this is kind of a close approximation. And you can see that arrow there kind of directing where you need to move it to. And it will also recognize the eardrum when you get there. So you don't have to keep pushing it in too far because most kids don't like having things stuck in their ears. I know my kids certainly don't. And this is just something if you've got you know, kids with ear problems, it'll save you a trip to the doctor. You can get an MP4 file delivered to them as a video, but it can also actually out, outlay it as a bunch of still frames very similar to what some medical professionals use for diagnosis. So a neat product here from Tylenol. So I always love stopping by the IO gear table because they have a lot of neat gadgets that I know a lot of you are interested in. They've got a new KVM. This is actually out now. It's about $200. And it's a three-way KVM. And as you can see, because it has RGB lights, it must be for gaming, and that's because it is. It'll support 4K60 video max. It will also do 1440p at up to 144 hertz. It does not appear, though, to support HDR. We were looking through the specs, and it didn't indicate that. But one cool thing about this is that if I go to number two here, so we're going to switch away from the Mac that they have hooked up, it's going to switch over to an Xbox console. And normally, on an Xbox, you don't have mouse support, but they have a special emulation layer inside the hardware that maps the mouse to the controller, so you can actually play some of your Xbox games with a keyboard and mouse along with the controller if you want to. Now, the way they have this one set up is that we're switching sources here, and when I switch back to the Mac, the keyboard, the mouse, and the game controller along with the display all go back to the Mac as well. So it's more than just KVM, it's KVM and a joystick along with video. Pretty neat product here from IOGear. And one other thing is it's got some uh, audio built in as well. It's got a DAC built in, so you can hook headphones right up to that to uh, get some audio out of it. So I ran into our friends at Synology, and in full disclosure, they're a sponsor here on the channel. We just wrapped up a pretty extensive tutorial series for them. And they've got a product that I think a lot of you will be very interested in. This is their new DS723. And this is a two-bay network-attached storage device. And it's running with a Ryzen R1600 processor. And a couple of things are neat about this beyond the new processor. The first is that you've got your dual two, uh, one gig Ethernet on the back, but they now have an optional slide-in 10 gig module, little NVMe card that slides right in there. And so you can have this run at 10 gigabits or 5 or 2.5. Another neat thing here on the bottom involves the NVMe storage. Now, normally you would use this for caching, which you can still do, but you also now have the option to have the NVMe be its own storage volume. So you can attach a super quick storage volume for things that you want fast transfers for over your multi-gig network, and then use the spinning hard drives for more long-term archiving. And this one, uh, because it's a plus model, will do all the fancy stuff that we just covered in the tutorial series that we recently wrapped up. So all that backup stuff, the cloud uh, office stuff, all of that works on this because it's a plus. They also now have a four bay model here also, the 923 plus. And this one is a similar device, just with more drive bays on it. Uh, it does have uh, two of those NVMEs on the bottom as well. Now, the two-bay unit is 449 The four-bay unit is 599 And that, of course, is diskless. You've got to bring your own disks to the mix. And then the 10-gig uh, Ethernet module is 150 bucks. So we stopped by the Kodak table, and they've got another one of these cool little zinc cameras. I think this thing looks pretty cool. So this has, it's a digital camera. It has a printer built in that will print out on these little stickers. And we've seen this before from Kodak and a few other manufacturers. The neat thing about this is its design. It's got a really funky looking design here in a bunch of different colors. This one is a uh, Kodak color scheme. And here's another cool thing. On the front, it's got filters. So you know, you got all your fancy Instagram filters, but these are actual filters that you can put over the lens to change the way the photo looks without having to go through any photo apps or anything. You can just snap a picture uh, with the filter on over it and put a nice little red hue on it if you want. So kind of a clever idea there.
Now this will record onto an SD card and it also works with an app so you can print photos you took from your phone on the camera by sending that uh, photo via Bluetooth to the printer. So this is a photo printer for little zinc photos and a camera and it's got the filters built in too. It's going to sell for $79 coming out in February. Now another table I always love to visit is Pluggable. They've always got some cool gadget. This is their new Thunderbolt 4 docking station and it looks a lot like the Thunderbolt 3 version we reviewed a couple of years ago. In fact the 2020 show where I last saw these guys was where I saw that dock and Jake will uh, go around to the back here and you can see what we've got. Now this has four video outputs. Now in the prior version, you could only drive two displays, so you could choose between DisplayPort and HDMI, but only in each row, so only two displays. But you'll notice this new dock has four display outputs plugged in, and if Jake uh, goes back a little bit, you'll notice that we've got four 4K displays running at 60 hertz, which should be impossible on Thunderbolt, but through a combination of MST and a whole bunch of other stuff, many Windows laptops with the Evo chipset will be able to output four 4K60 displays through this dock with a Thunderbolt connection. So if your laptop is compatible, you should be able to get this to work and most of the current generation Evos should be able to pull this off along with many NVIDIA GPUs. But you'll need to check to make sure that you support all the standards to be sure that you can get this four display thing going. The laptop that they have here on the desk is the framework laptop that we reviewed a few months back, and they've got their Thunderbolt 4 connector plugged into one of their uh, USB, or, uh, USB 4 or Thunderbolt modules here. So it's possible to go beyond just the two displays at 4K60, and it looks like this dock might help you do that. Now, one other thing on this dock is that it has 2.5 gig ethernet on the back, and it costs $299. So not all that bad for a Thunderbolt dock. Another dock they announced here at the show is this 11-in-1 USB Type-C hub. And this will give you a whole bunch of ports here. And what's neat about this one is that it will draw power from your computer if you don't have power passing through it. So you could use it as a travel dock to get some of these additional ports. You'll notice it's got two HDMI ports here. So if your laptop supports MST, you can have both of those work independently. This has gigabit ethernet though only, but you can pass through power if you want with this port and it will deliver 100 watts back to the laptop. So a nice versatile dock here that I think would work well on a desk, but also in the bag. And the USB-C dock here costs $79, pretty reasonable I think for what it offers. So here's a really cool video production tool that I just ran across. This is called the CMO. You could probably get one of these for about 150 bucks street. Now what this does is it takes HDMI video and it pipes it into an iPhone or an iPad. And if my friend here can flip it around, I can show you what it looks like. So you get like a professional grade monitor built into your phone. You got the histogram, you can do all your color analysis, you can do zebra lines. It does recording, so you can record a backup on your iPhone if you want while your camera is also doing the recording. Offers a lot of features that you see on a professional monitor. Now, you also have the option to stream live through the app using the phone's data connection. It can't record and stream at the same time on the phone, but you have the ability to do a live stream from your digital SLR in this example. The battery life on this is pretty good. You can see it uses those standard Sony-style batteries, so it should uh, last you a good long time depending on the size of battery that you use. Uh, my friend here at the booth said his has been going all day here. It's certainly been running since the show started, and he still has plenty of battery life left on it. Now this will work with Lightning, but also with USB Type-C on the iPad. And if Apple does end up switching to a, a USB-C standard on the phone, it'll keep working after that happens. So a really neat tool. Not that much latency either. I, you know, a little bit as I was running my hand across it, but it does feel like a really nice, inexpensive solution to having a uh, expensive monitor mounted to the top of your camera and you get a lot of extra features too. It does 1080p 60 maximum, but of course if you're recording at 4K on your camera you have uh, the best of both worlds there. So here's another cooking device that we came across. I don't know what this is going to cost yet, they don't have a price, but it's being aimed at the higher end uh, market. But this is cool, this is a sous vide station from a company called Typher and it's got an integrated tablet here with a whole bunch of recipes that guide you step by step 
towards making the best version of whatever you're trying to cook. They hired some high-end chefs to record these video instructions, and it takes you every step of the way to get the recipe right. Now, if you're not familiar with sous vide, basically what you do is you heat up water. It's kind of a slow cooking process. It takes a while, and it's a fine art. You really got to do it right. And if you are somebody like me who uh, really wants to be guided step by step to learn how to cook things properly, this might be one way to do that. It's kind of like hiring a chef to train you. Uh, and you've got all the equipment here to do it along with a database of recipes with a really nice layout here and I think some very detailed instructions to get it right. So this was another exhausting evening. We did another three hours here and I'm telling you we missed stuff because there is a lot to see here. But we did cover, I think, a bulk of the cool stuff that I think you all might find of interest and the things that may get missed by a lot of other channels. Check out these cool ice sculptures they have here. Even some of the bars are made out of ice. Pretty cool stuff. And again, this is one of my favorite events. The best part is, beyond all the cool stuff to see, is that they've got some great food, too. So you get fed while you walk around here. So we're going to go grab a few more things before they kick us out. But I want to thank you all for tuning in for Dispatch 2. Tomorrow is going to be a killer day for us. We're going to be on the show floor during the day. And then we've got another one of these events in the evening called Showstoppers. So we've got more to come here from CES 2023. Thank you all for tuning in. Definitely subscribe and hit those notifications because we'll have another one of these coming up. And you don't want to miss all the cool stuff that we're finding. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.